Parents in Somerville are itching to share their stories in a public space. And this is going to be here at Somerville Media Center. To do so, the Somerville Media Center. Oh. understand that just let me know when it's ready say like go can I go <coughs> it's on welcome to the other life today <laughs> sorry about the the wait we had a problem with the audio but we're here tonight and before and actually starting um it's nice to be here guys with the summer view producers group we have theo here today thank theo for doing the cameras and ricardo in the main studio in the control room and thanks for coming guys um i want to read this letter i was 
doing this. I didn't have that much time to read that, but it's really interesting that you're going to have here during the summer, starting in actually next week, right? It's going to start on June the 16th on Thursday. So every Thursday, you're going to have this uh, really interesting project. I want to run uh, read this uh, letter because I think it's it's interesting and maybe you can share this with friends and folks around. Um, yeah, it's it seems going to be a great summer. You're going to have a lot of uh, youth programs and things in Somerville as usual. But this is going to be very special because it's after this time when we had to wait to come back to normal. No, so in two years we haven't been having uh, opportunities like that. So especially for teenagers. So SMC is in a position to provide a safe space for students to build confidence learn industry skills um, and find a voice for themselves. Teens in Somerville are itching to share their stories in a public space. To do so, the Somerville Media Center is opening its television and radio studios on Thursday afternoons to provide Somerville teens which a free weekly drop-in classes where they can eat and socialize with local creators, their age in a positive environment. Can you hear that, Theo? It's, it's cool, right? Um, called Channel Surfer. This program allows them to try lots of different ways to create all while they are being trained to handle professional equipment, developing editing skills to create quick and stunning effects for their projects, and networking with locals in the industry to set our, um, our teams up for success. You're going to meet your um, folks here doing the same thing. Really interesting. Giving teens a free membership for the, sem for the remainder of 2022 and staffing a program with supportive records, uh, records check it, adults um, does come at a price. We're asking just your help in feeding them. So this is a letter that I'm going to start working this this week, next week. So. We are going to get like free um, for them, like free membership for the remaining 2022. And also they are going to be trained. They are going to have a lot of fun. They like Theo is doing now, right? Uh, and you're going to have the support of local uh, business restaurants supporting them with food. Hopefully going to have a, a, a lot of different stuff, like maybe pizza. Um, burritos, tacos, yeah, maybe some pastry too, stuff like that. Cool. And maybe Theo is going to ask for um, donuts, right? Cool. Thanks, Cat Powers, for this um, amazing idea of bringing teens here. And let's bring them, Channel Surfer. And Evan is, is going to help that too. Um, he's in charge of this program too. Cool. Um, talking about teens and talking about education, talking about Somerville, we are so glad to be here um, in this community and to bring more conversation about education. So, um, we can talk about how things are now, 
but I prefer to bring more the attention of how we think we could, we can help sharing our own experience. Um, and as an educator, I have been really trying to um, help and observing the gaps, you know, the, in education um, that we can just um, fill with awareness. And one thing is, thanks to you, one thing is also like we were talking before today, um, make things happen. And that's the topic today with the engage, you know, especially teenagers in doing that, that type of um, practice, you know, being together and practice. And there are a lot of opportunities, but sometimes they are not aware of what it's available. Um, so I think it's our responsibility to share that. In talking about sharing this, um, here at Summer View Media Center, and I think that Summer View has a lot of um, support for that. We hope we're going to get support for this program in the summer. It will happen. Um, it will be fantastic. And there's no doubt that we're going to have this really, really um, successful for the community, for them. And the other project that I want to talk about is a project called Indigenous Educational System. It's a system that we have been developing. Educators have been doing this sometimes in their classrooms, you know, sometimes with uh, their kids. Um, and sometimes we do that with, um, we know what we're doing, that we are um, using this knowledge that from those um, groups of people that they have this wisdom about nature, about um, well-being, right? About balance, about a lot of things that sometimes we forget to talk about or we forget to practice. As we said before today, <laughs> it's, it's easy. We have this expression, right, in Portuguese. It's easy to talk, it's easy to say, but it's not that, that easy to practice that. Or in English, how you say this in English? Cheap, talk is cheap, right? But make, yeah, talk is, talking is, talking is cheap, thanks to you. And make things happen is, is different, that practice is different. So when I talk this uh, practice, it's interesting that we can do this um, every day if you want. Right, we can practice those um, techniques. So I want to start today with the breathing exercise, with the breathing technique, that I think it's one of the, the, the most uh, important um, things to become aware of our um, surroundings, of our um, environment and to become like sensitive to nature, to, to develop the um, intuition, maybe I can say, the ecological intuition, that you feel nature differently. And a lot of people has that, of course, uh, a lot of people. Uh, but sometimes we forget, we think, and we forget to practice. And practicing this uh, breathing, we can make ourselves like more uh, present and sensitive 
people aware of what is going on with ourselves too. So this technique, it's called alternate um, nostril breathing. We are going to use both sides of our um, nose and we are going to breathe uh, alternating them. So from the left, we start from the left, then we keep the breathing inside and then we're going to uh, exhale from the right. But I'm going to show you how it works. So um, this is a very um, ancient technique that maybe more than 5,000 years ago and some that, that we know. But of course, all of those um, we can call maybe meditation or breathing or those moments that all those ancient you know people used to do more than us I think um, personally I think that they didn't have too much uh, too many distractions the the way we have now and maybe they could sit down and you know <laughs> breathing more um, with this um, consciousness of what it was going on. So this exercise bring the moment that uh, bring us to the present moment and let us feel uh, more um, also of course aware of our breathing because I think it happened to me before when I started doing this exercise. Um, I realized I was not paying attention um, carefully or with this, you know, importance of my breathing. I was just doing this without um, thinking, it's like automatically. But it's interesting to pay attention and to, rem to remind ourselves that we are breathing all the time and when you we find out how it is this process doing this practice it helps a lot so the first I think the first thing is like you need to sit in a comfortable position um, can be on chair or like I'm doing now, but it, make sure that you have your spine really straight, then you can feel like this um, more, um, it's more appropriate to, to exercise the, the breathing. Um, and secondly, um, make sure that your head is not, I mean, resting, um, on the wall or something that on the chair you need to have this really straight here too and because if you just rest you know like you if you lie down it's something that it's um, you can relax too much and put it, it's gonna put you to sleep and that's not the you can do that to sleep of course relax and sleep but the, the, the purpose of the exercise is just you know, um, making you aware of your own breathing. Um, so I'm going to use my fingers to, it's important to do that because it's something that helps you to uh, use just one um, nostril and then you're going to use the other one. So the first thing is exhale from the left Then inhale from the left. Exhale from the right. And from the right again. 
Inhale. Keep inside and exhale. Again. Basically, it's like that. And now I need to clean my nose. Theo, do you mind if I... I know you're doing the cameras. But I want to do more exercise, the breathing exercise. And I forgot to bring um, toilet paper. Você tem um pouco de papel? Se você puder pegar, por favor. Obrigada, desculpe. Mas aí, você pega aquele, aquele mais suave, sabe? Que tem... Porque o outro é meio... Obrigada. Um pedacinho só, por favor. Obrigada. Só um pedaço de papel higiênico. Obrigada. Obrigada. Uh, yes, because while you're doing this exercise, of course, it's, it's natural that you feel that you need to clean more. It's interesting because, and this, this is part of the process too, you know, and uh, for some people who is not breathing, using the both nostrils that to breathe, Sometimes it's blocked. It happened to me a lot. And it's it's normal. This is it's something that it's going to happen. Um, sometimes, you know, um, sometimes very often, sometimes it depends of a lot of things, but it's 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 about balance. You know, um, that's one thing that is really important in this project in this, uh, thank you so much, Theo. He brought something to help me. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, appreciate that. Um, so, make sure before you start this, uh, this practice, if you are breathing from you see how interesting it is? How many times did you check that? If you were breathing from bro both, it means balance. That's why um, I think that's why you have, you know, two channels here. Sorry about that. Uh, good. Much better now. And if I want to teach you something interesting, uh, that when I read this in a Hatha Yoga book a long time ago, when I was starting um, breathing exercises and meditation, I used to have more problems with this balance in my um, the sides, right and left, sometimes only one or other. So uh, the secret is it's, it's really interesting that you can use a book, uh, I have some books that I'm going to talk about later. Um, you can use a book to do this, but what happens is if you don't have a book, you can use your, your hands. We're going to talk about hands too today. <laughs> you know, hands are very important and for this um, project, you know, for this system. Um, it's based on indigenous uh, values and way of life. And we have a lot to learn from that. And interesting that if you use your hand, and for example, if your left side, it's not working correctly. I mean, now it is, right? But 
suppose if it's not, it's blocked, or if it's, if you feel that you want to open more, you know, to bring more air, more oxygen, more prana, or more energy, you know, there are a lot of names, but it's air, it's breathing correctly is really, it's, it's the most important thing that it's going to make you also think about things that create and feel and be aware. So imagine if you have this problem that it's not working, one side of the other side. Um, if it's not something that needs um, to fix, you know, like in an operation or something, some people they have, I used to have that um, thing that it's, it's blocking. Uh, if it's not, it's because your body, it's kind of your energy, it's kind of unbalanced. So you can fix using your, your hand. This is something that it's, it's really amazing and you can try, right? Uh, so using a hand, you close your hand like this and you're going to put it here using your, your arms. That's the position. And you're going to put a, a, a little pressure, of course, not that much. But, and then, you see that it's the opposite way. You know, if my left side, it's not working properly, I'm going to use my right arm here to do this um, pressure here in that part, you know, of my body. And you can try this. Of course, you... It's not going to be in one second or two. First time I remember I did, it took me like maybe five minutes. So you need to have patience, sometimes more, it depends. And magically is just, it unblocks, it unblocks your nostril. And um, also, you know, the same way, if it's your right, which is not working, you're going to use your right hand, but the left arm to do this. And then, and you stay there for a while till you've, till you're going to feel like, wow, it's unblocked. So make sure you do this before doing this, um, this technique of breathing. Right? Um, one more thing is important. To, while you're breathing, um, pay attention where you're breathing, where you are moving your body to, to make this air, you know, to make the air comes to your lungs, to come inside. There are two, um, the most common situation is that you're going to use your um, chest, which is wrong, right? That's, it, it's like anxiety that a person is always like, sometimes like tired or, you know, feel like you, you, oh, you're breathing, but you, you feel that you're tired, you're still tired, but there's something wrong there using too much your chest or using only your chest, which it's not the right way to breathe. To breathe correctly, you need to, to use your diaphragm, right? So it's called diaphragmatic um, breathing. And it's here that you're gonna, um, I think I'm gonna sit down in another position so maybe we can we can show better this um, diaphragm breathing, which is really important. It's called also like the the baby um, breathing. Have you have you ever seen a, a newborn baby um, sleeping? The belly is like that. You know, this is the di diaphragm. When you see what, and you see this movement. You know, and 
it's because they breathe in correctly. Because they, you know, um, they, they still know. And then sometimes I feel that we, we are all always like, <laughs> sometimes, you know, we think that we're learning and sometimes we are forgetting uh, really important things like breathing. Um, so we need to, I, I, I tell myself sometimes I want to, I want to uh, breathe, you know, again, like a newborn baby. And this, it means using your diaphragm to breathe. Um, so you can, you can say like your belly, right? Your diaphragm is here. So I'm going to do this. Then you can feel like here moving. instead of here, right? So why are you doing this breathing? That's it. It's interesting that it's um, practice. That's that's all about practice and try. You, I don't know how many times you're gonna try. Um, I'm still trying. I need to remind myself every day, and sometimes I forget because um, it's not an easy thing to do. It's easy to do when you understand, when you feel the, when you get the results of it, you, you realize that it's, that's the first step in my own experience, my opinion, because I, I've been doing this for a while and as I said, sometimes I forget, but I'm always trying to remember how to breathe, reminding myself how to breathe. Um, and it changed everything, everything. Um, during the pandemic, I was uh, thinking a lot about bringing more this um, conversation, the awareness about breathing to as much um, people as I know. Um, and I did that at home, you know, with people who I live with and some friends. I had some time to talk about that. Um, I was in school at the time and I, I was writing about this. And finally, I decide, you know, it's always a process. Um, and I used to do this also with my students, you know. Um, long time ago every class and uh, I know a lot of educators a lot of teachers they have been doing this too Here in the United States uh, they call mindfulness um, that's that's really interesting um, that you need to sit down and pay attention in your breathing it's another technique too uh, there are a lot of techniques um, but the most important thing is to practice it doesn't matter which technique you're using to breathe better but um, practice and breathe and and be aware of what you're doing and 
how important it is. Um, so after, you know, putting all this together and meeting people too who is working with different projects, but at the same time, the same project. So I'm talking about um, indigenous, you know, who are they? People who are um, supporting, people who are um, practicing this, um, living this, sharing this, um, educating this about indigenous way of life, uh, respecting um, our environment, you know, uh, being so uh, connected to nature. Um, people who is like searching this um, place where um, we create and we want to share together and live, you know, well, you, you know, this well-being. So during the time here that I'm here in the United States, I have been meeting really interesting people who are working with, as I said, different projects, but at the same time, the same project, because they are also indigenous. And one of them is Angel Pineda. He wrote this book about the, um, the fall of the empire, uh, the Aztec empire. But it's interesting that the book has a, a name, um, the play, you know, it's a play about the Aztecs, but the, the name of the book is La Caída del Imperio Anahuac. And it's studying about the Anahuac and the Anahuacs, you know, those indigenous people from the Anahuac land, which means um, the land of the water, you know, and they were called Anahuacs. And they were um, in that paradise with water, with everything, with this, um, all those uh, resources that we, we all dream about. And meeting him and reading his book, his play, um, and working um, in this film project too, the Fall of the Anahuac Empire project, and meeting artists like Hakrufi, you know, um, Raul Cruz Figueroa, and meeting people like um, other indigenous, like Claudia Matos too, Theo. Theo just told me today that he's, um, he has been in Amazonia, so he visited there. I'm from Brazil and I never did that. And I would love to imagine he's, he's also like um, um, willing to share his experience sometime, right, Theo? About the Amazonia, you, that you've been there, that he met those, um, you know, in, in location. Um, he had that experience, the real experience with the water, you know, that we can also say the Amazonia is like the land of the water too like the Anahuac, right? So we have that connection, you know, um, Mexicans, Brazilians, you know, um, North Americans, you know, um, like, so we, we have been having this experience here and putting this, um, all of us with the same uh, cause together. So meeting them and working the community, we are so um, excited about the idea of making this happen, right? So um, hands are very important, right? So learning about how to use more your hands to create, like to grow, uh, plants, right? Hands on the soil. We talk about this. Hands on um, food that you're preparing, right? Touching your food. 
sometimes eating with your hands too, right? Uh, and it's another thing that, and using your hand to cut the, the vegetables, the lettuce, for example, right? Instead of using a knife. So th those are examples that we are uh, bringing uh, in this system that we're still learning and it's very organic because it's um, just, it's, it's all about awareness of our surroundings, our environment, nature. And using our hands to touch that, right? And to make things happen. It's another thing that it's, is really important, especially in this, in this moment in the, in the history after being so uh, concerned about touching things because of the pandemic that we had. And it's still, right? Um, it's also like sometimes I think everybody went through that um, during this, you know, the last two years, like touching things or using their hands or touching, you know, like uh, sometimes yourself, nature, things, you know. So it makes us feel like back uh, to nature, you know, water, soil, um, and feel that with your hands and using this. So during the process of breathing, and then later, um, the second step would be making things with your hands. That is going to bring you that awareness of uh, environment, that intuition, you know, that ecological intuition that is going to make us to respect nature. and all the elements and all the things that make us really uh, healthy. And the planet too, you know, the soil and the, the water and everything. And breathing correctly, it's gonna put you in a state of uh, um, relaxation, but it's not that you're gonna be like too relaxed or too, it's gonna be it's going to put you in the right uh, tone, maybe. Can I say that? Sometimes people, they look for a lot of other things outside of their bodies. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, outside of their bodies to make them feel better. You know, it's, it's something that I, I usually ask myself, do I need that? Um, do I need to drink that or do I need to eat that? Um, and I just don't ask myself, I ask my body, right? Because when you start breathing correctly, it's interesting that your body has that um, um, conscience, you know, about what is good, what is not good, what you can, you know, have or not. And it puts you also to exercise more than that relaxation, that first moment of relaxation. It's something that is just the beginning of a lot of other things. Because after or during also, right? I also want to read something that I, I wrote yesterday about this um, that I think it's really interesting when I talk about this, the continuity, you know, of this process of learning how to breathe. It gives you the, um, it's a kind of second chance, you know, that it doesn't matter how old you are or what you do, it's, it's something that is really be, uh, uh, basic that even if you are really busy, you're gonna find a way to do things that it's good for you and for your environment and for other people and for um, uh, 
so I wrote this um, yesterday when I was um, thinking about the show today and it really inspired me um, this opportunity of sharing experiences here and uh, bringing um, um, inviting people you know bringing um, people to share their experience too and it's a great opportunity to um, to do things that you you feel like um, that it's important to everybody Breathing uh, is the main key to become aware of our being. Being alert of our breathing is the process of nature, awareness itself. Through breathing exercises, we are going to develop ecological intuition towards our environment. That's the part that I like when I say that we begin, right? There's always the, the first step, the beginning, and the, and the moment that you are experiencing, that you say, okay, let me try it. So we begin, we continue, we finish. Oh, that's, that's the, the word I can write, but uh, to say it's uninterruptedly, so without interruption, right? And yes, let's breathe our, you know, nature and naturally. So it's something that it's, it's good to, to go back to that time where we used to, to breathe correctly. And another thing that it's nice to, I'm going to quote that's, um, that's a really interesting observation here. In many regions of the planet, it is not conceivable that humans and no humans live in uncommunicable wor worlds, right? And according to separate principles, I'm gonna read this again. In many regions of the planet, it is not conceivable that humans and no humans live in, uncommunic in uncommunicable worlds in according to separate principles. The environment is not objectified as an autonomous sphere. Plants and animals, rivers and rocks, meteors and seasons do not exist in the same ontological niche, defined by their lack of humanity. That's really interesting. This uh, Cola 2012. So we consider that popular knowledge of uh, handling things, you know, and when you talk about this popular knowledge, we are bringing this knowledge from the indigenous people from ancient cultures that we sometimes forget. And bringing back that learning through their um, experiences, it also connecting the, this with the breathing exercises, it connects us to our, you know, first moments in, in this planet where, um, we used to know how to breathe. And now it's, it's again, you know, that chance to, to go back to, you know, our, um, you know, beginnings, you know, when we start here in those ancient um, um, cultures, what they used to do, and they, they have a lot to say. And, so as I said, this, this system is, is very organic. So it's, 
it's also really interesting to do this with other folks together because then we can share experience and um, I'm here today, you know, sharing my own experience and also practicing because sometimes it's like, especially nowadays we have a lot of distractions and sometimes we use more our hands just to scroll things, you know, and see feeling more those um, objects, they are really um, sometimes alive, you know, that technology, that's fine, but it, we need that balance, mm, and that's what the show is today. And that's one question, for example, that I learned at the Aztecs, and they used to ask themselves, how can we find balance in an ephemeral world? You know, so balance, it's everything. You know, some people like Kep, she shared with me today and she told me other times that she likes that movement. And she said that today, she, five in the morning, she was swimming. And, you know, that's beautiful. And she saw a loon, and she asked me, well, have you seen a loon? Do you know what it's a loon? I said, no, and she showed me a picture. And that's a great meditation. That's a, that's, that's a great uh, breathing exercise, swimming, right? Exercising. Um, so loon, this is a loon. And it's so cool. I don't know if you can see. You know, it's a, like a big duck. And she was swimming and she saw that. That's a great experience. It, it makes a, you know, a person's day, you know. Imagine starting a day like that. That's fabulous. Um, And it is all about balance, you know. Find that balance of your both nostrils. We don't think about that sometimes, you know. We just breathe, right? And But there's a balance here too. And there's a balance here. There's a balance here. There's a balance everywhere. There's a balance in nature, right? And that's what we are looking for especially now, I'm looking for that. I'm always looking for that balance. And then am I eating too much? Am I uh, studying too much? Am I um, sleeping too much? Am I, you know? Or <laughs> um, I'm not, or I am not reading too much, or I'm, I'm not doing things. Is there a lack in this? So, and when we, to me, it's like learning that the process um, of the breathing, that it's here with me all the time, right? It's like, um, it's something that I can't deny. And it makes me feel like that I'm trying to find the balance through those uh, breathing exercises, you know, uh, through that practice. And sometimes you're gonna feel that one side, it's, it's more open than the other one. And then when you check that, you tell yourself, wow. So it's not that balanced today, but that's okay, you know? It doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to be, but it's it's nice to just think about that. And and I think we are as human beings and part of this environment, the nature, <laughs> and everything. We are always um, 
if you're not thinking about that, we are feeling that. And that's why sometimes I feel that we, we are unhappy sometimes or when, one day we are happy and the other day we are unhappy or and thanks to minutes. Um, that's some balance too. And we just, you know, go back to breathing and then there we're gonna find the balance at least and then it's gonna kind of guide us to all the things you know the the process is really interesting and i'm 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 really um exciting about the idea of um practicing more days and talking more about that and and maybe sharing this with one minute, I know. Yeah, it was great. Um, thank you, Theo, so much. Thanks, Ricardo. Thanks, everybody here. Thanks, uh, Tina, Steve, Brian. They help a lot today here. Kat was here today, too. She always um, helping everybody here. It's, it's, it's really good to be here. It's amazing and thank you <laughs> i think theo wants to to say something to you no thank you so much see you next time and see you next next uh, um uh dead or life and cool awesome you guys want to say something you want to practice now no? a little bit Thank you. Awesome. What happened there? Ele falou isso? Que não consegue gravar um show, como que ele falou? Frustrado com o quê? Acho que também você estava se mexendo um pouquinho até para lá, para cá e mexeu aqui lá. E deve ter feito um barulho enorme lá. Deve ter sido isso também. Né? Da próxima vez a gente tem que mover as coisas. Pode ser. Pode ser também. Mas é porque não tinha gente hoje também, né? É difícil fazer um show assim com pouca gente, né? E yeah, as pessoas não estão vindo, mas eles vão ter que começar a vir, né? Como? Então, só no que... Você, a escada, bom, eu falei, vai ter um terremoto aqui, esse Theo, vai lá, mexe na escada, Theo. Improvising yeah, behind this. Always, the always have to like fly. Can you take a picture uh, of us? Yes, oh of God. course. All right. Can you take with with her? Huh? Oh, I don't need to. This is not. I oh. I didn't even help. Next time. <laughs>
No, it's because I had to help in the editing. But next time I'm oh, gonna well, be your, your brother. Does he want to come and and practice it? Yeah, he us? should. He had to work today. Oh, so they called him into the work. It'll today. be awesome because he. Yeah, he's you you met him. Remember he came here. The oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Him Can and him and your daughter should uh, perform. They should sure, do a collaboration. Sure. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Does he play music too? He's not. A, he doesn't play music. <laughs> Yeah, some people are made for that. Wonderful. All right. Well, I'm going to get it on the caster.